Oh, shoot. Always hit the guitar. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, how are you today? I am in a damn good mood. Uh, yesterday, no, Sunday, Sunday, we just wrapped up our uh, half a million subscriber celebration on uh, on YouTube. And I just want to say thank you to all of you that were a part of it, to everybody at Sheffield, everybody at PRS. Um, and I want to say congrats to the winner of the whole PRS rig. We gave away a guitar, amp, and all the accessories to a user on GuitarGate called JMac. And I want to share a piece of his story. JMac was in a terrible, paralyzing motorcycle accident, okay? And he joined the community because he digged the vibe, and he wanted to get his hands moving for therapy. So he's a music guy, he's all banged up, and he, he got a guitar for therapy. But then just last week, um, his, I believe his son's school, they had people there that wanted to learn guitar, but um, they didn't have any money for an instrument. And he donated the guitar that he was going, that he was using um, for himself for therapy. And then randomly, and I mean randomly, I put a number in a number generator, uh, pick the number of the person that corresponds to a member on the website. Uh, randomly, I picked him, and now he's getting not just a guitar, not just an amp, not just all the accessories, but then another user on the website donated a whole pedal board. That's the kind of community this is. Anyway, I love you all. Thank you so much. I feel like today's day one. Uh, secondly, I get a call from my friend Steve Bellamy uh, yesterday, and he's like, dude, uh, Eric Weinstein and I were out here with Bonamassa. Why the hell aren't you out in LA? Everybody's out here for Nam. He's like, I don't go to Nam, but I hang out with everybody that goes to Nam because I don't want to get Nam thrax, which I totally get. And uh, I said, man, I, l listen, it's my wife's birthday. She left me with all four kids. We have six baseball and soccer games, and I got this live stream, and I got a rehearsal. And he's basically like, ah, that's come to LA next time. And then he goes, listen. I'm going through your videos, and I don't see you doing any videos on Bonamassa. I see you doing one with Eric Gales and Bonamassa, but not one by himself. And I said, all right, well, you know what? Let's do one. Let's fire across the bow. So I go on GuitarGate. I go to the React's request page. It's happening live, ladies and gentlemen. Joe. Now, I'm going to get lots of Joes. Now, look. Look at all these submissions from students. I got Joe with Eric Clapton, Mark Broussard with Joe. Um... You got Kingfish. Uh, ooh, Joey Landris, Still Feel Gone. That's such a great track. Uh, Beth and Joe. Uh, Joe Robinson doing Cocaine, which is awesome. Um, Joe Bonamassa sits in with Guthrie Trap Band, one of my favorite videos on the internet. I just watched that thing. Um, let's do this one. Breaking Up Somebody's Home, the old Albert King song. Uh, and he's got the flying V. Love it. So this is from Daniel Perez Valencia, a lifetime member. Thank you. He says, we all know what Joe B can do, but here are some licks that had me scratching my head and desperate to figure out why they sound so damn good. All right. Hit the like button. Hit the video. Full screen. Ice cold. G minor groove. Michael Rhodes on bass. Kirk Franklin back there on guitar. All the best of the best. Rest in peace, buddy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a hot lick. Um, okay, so for all you wondering what the hell's going on, uh, this isn't a lesson. Basically, I'm watching this in real time, trying to give you some stuff to pay attention to when you're working on this stuff on your own. Groove in G. Killer, killer band. If you listen, no one's stepping on anybody's toes. Everybody's got their own spot. They come in sparingly. A lot of people not playing. 
you know, here and there, always a sign of good listening. Um, and just a killer groove so that Joe can go full Albert King on it. Now, he's playing the Flying V. Knowing Joe, <laughs> it probably is Albert's Flying V, but just strung, you know, the way we play it. Might not be, but either way, just preposterous tone. What you're seeing from the get-go is uh, you're starting out in your Albert King land. Now, this Albert King box, if you will, is a piece of pattern five if you're hip to the cage system. That's your D shape. Um, like, imagine D, right? Roots on your fourth and third string, three frets, or second string, three frets apart. E, F, G. And then there's your root. That's where you're resolving everything to. Flat seven, flat three, four. Bend up into the five. Get a little of the blues, a flat five through there. And then you can rock back, flat seven. And there's your fifth. So you get your whole funk right there. Now, then it goes back into pattern four. Right? Then he goes up into this zone. Pattern two here. Again, based on your A shape, just like you have A major. Roots on your open fifth and second fret, four, uh, third string, respectively. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Right? And then you have flat three, four, five, flat seven. Um, and then he's in here. So when you're bending in here, you want to make sure you get to that root. And you come there, and then you went, and then you switch to make sure you adjust for the, the tuning for the four and the five here. So the four and the flat three. Same thing as here. And then he does this little cool lick up here, which is why I stopped and I got sidetracked. <laughs> Come on, Joe. I'm assuming it sounds like we're starting on the fifth. I don't know why this thing keeps coming up. I, mean, I hate YouTube sometimes. So, paddling off D, it sounds like, so the fifth of G, and then you're just, I'm just going up the scale, seeing if it makes sense. Root, ninth, third, flat three, four, five, flat seven, root, and then I think he goes nine there on top. Just mother shit. Yeah, that nine and then then grabbing the flat three yeah love that shooting for the major six and often forgot about uh note in your blues playing so many of us get locked up in minor pentatonic world that's pattern four it's your e shape again root six and then a second fret fourth string bring it up f g a, B, C, D, E, F, G. Minor pentatonic shape. The two notes that you should always be thinking about adding once you get used to these big blues bends are your nine, which is the fifth of your five chord. Remember that forever. Your nine is your five. And your six, which again, is the third of your four chord. Even though the band doesn't go to a four, remember it forever. Your six is your four. And when you're in this zone, Man, I'm telling you, I used to get so much crap for it from Dan Gilbert at GIT. Don't flat six in here. Um, unless it goes to a minor four chord, it's just going to sound, I don't know, more minor. If you hit the sixth, it's just... It, it's just it's just like, ooh, like there's hope. Like, like, we, like we know there's a plan here. But if you're like... And you're not going over the minor four chord it, it just man did he used to light my ass up over that one love that lick. same zone up here same as here what a band now all that here that 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 right just Okay. 
octave, same little lick, just this octave, this octave, this octave, this octave. Don't, don't forget that you can jump all day. Yes! That, 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 that. What is that again? What is that again? That's your six. Flat seven, your F. Right to your E. And then he does this twirly thing after you. <laughs> it's just a silly little thing. Little, little, like weird G like this, these little grabs of the nine and pushing them into the flat three. You don't always have to stay on it. It's little things, again, nines and sixes. That's where to start when you start getting beyond the pentatonic. Listen to the keys. Here come the horns. It's on B flat. Best bass player in the game. Here's your four chord. Hear that funk guitar in the back too? Lightning strike. Don't pay attention to Joe here. Listen to all the space the instruments are leaving in. Okay, couple things there. One, four to a flat three, right? C, B flat, and you can you can full B flat major that bad boy if you want, because that's the relative major to G minor, right? So you don't you don't have to shy away from that D if you don't want to, but you know, just just make sure there's a conversation there. What I love about it is it doesn't go up to the five; it hammers straight back to the one on breaking up somebody's home. That's such a cool thing to do. It's so simple because it's just one, but it, it, it's subtle, but it makes it. Now again, pay attention to these little keyboard parts. It sounds like a piece of B flat. What I'm trying to figure out here is If, if we're getting an E flat or an E natural in here, whether in, whether we're implying a C major triad or or we're keeping it minor. Or this is one of these things I would just play with it with the band and see if I can just pick that one out and then the keyboard player is gonna give me some dirty look if I get it wrong or he's gonna give me like a if I get it right. Either way, it's 50 50 shots, worth the risk. Do it early in the song. Yeah. E natural. Flat seven, you mean F. What a groove. Love that horn part. Don't 
Don't sleep on Kirk back there laying down that funk with that log guitar. That is such a good hook. The elevated horn part. I love that. I love that. Such a that coming in pattern too, right? With that jumping right from the root to the flat seven to the F and making it sing. I mean, simple. But it's just piercing. It's so in the vein of Albert King. Love Albert King. We all love Albert King. All right, I'm gonna let. I'm gonna. All right, I'm gonna try not to stop. Is that nine again. Using a couple different vibratos. So many things to talk about in here. Um, uh, he introduces like this really shaky kind of vibrato, which he hasn't done yet in the song. But this little, this little, like where you just keep bending up, and sometimes, even though he didn't do that that time, where you, where you grab the other string, that is quintessential Albert King. Everybody should study Albert King. If you don't know where to start. Start with crosscut saw. Is that lick again? And then again, listen to it. If you've been watching this channel a while, you know what I'm about to say. Whenever you hear something that sounds like, ooh, what is that? Stop put words to it because again all music theory is is the study of what sounds good if you put the words to why something sounds good you can use it in other places and in any other type of music okay i can't stress that enough and the fact that joe introduces it early it's 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 which is the major sixth by the way um it's it's being played by the other instruments in the band we're firmly in g Dorian, if you will. So one, two, flat three, four, five, six, flat seven. Um, point is that that major sixth is the major third of your four chord. So we're thinking B flat major triad to C major triad, kind of everywhere, right? It, and we're resolving on G. But this putting that into words that that we landed on the major sixth, which is the third of major third of your four chord. You can use that anywhere now that you know what it is. Keep going. So whenever you hear stuff, stop, figure out, put words to it. Is that nine again? Horns, baby. Rushing it back there with that log What a band. Drums so solid. This is this super strong vibrato that Joe does better than basically anybody, okay? Um, I just wanted to mention the hi-hat work back there. Totally makes the groove. I've said it so many times. Again, the drums can hit. They can create the duration. They can create the impact. But the duration of the groove, like, together... That's where the bass takes over and pushes the initial impact made by the drums forward. It's the go, right? The exception to that is the shimmer on cymbals and most notably the squeeze of the hi-hat. You can play 
the same two and the same four, right? The kick and snare. Um, you can play the same groove and have different durations on the hi-hat, and you're going to get a totally different feel, which is going to make the rest of the band play totally differently. The, the, the precise looseness of the hi-hat work that is totally making this thing groove. Just watch that. Uh, so don't just watch Joe about to breathe fire. Just there's lots of people up there. Horn. There's that look again. All right, that one. Let's see if we got that one. have that note for note uh but you're what you're essentially what you're doing here is you're trying to get from this root flat three and g here into pattern four work your way down into pattern two and end up in pattern one root flat three and g minor like that and you're adding a little stank in there now everybody has these little moves this is one of these things that we all do differently. We all um, have our own little things that we steal from people and our own little things that we do that just we kind of do to get from pattern to pattern because it makes sense to our fingers and our ears. This, this is not a, a super intuitive thing for me, but that's your basic gist of what he's trying to accomplish is to get from here and then... then Well, ah, what the hell did he do? Uh. That, I love that little... I'm gonna have to work on that off camera. But, but then sliding up. That, that, that. That's slick. That, that. Why is that so slick? He comes from, um, you know, flat three, root, flat seven, root. It slides up to the root, flat three, nine. Little bright little sunshiny moment immediately jumps up into pattern three tags it again goes to the nine flat three flat three so just you know, right same spot so th th this idea of learning your intervals in all over the neck and knowing where the same basic attack points are where your chord tones are all over the neck super important and Joe is just an absolute master at knowing where everything is around him, but still having um, such a key-centered approach to always bring your ear back to the one. It's that blues key-centered thing, but knowing where everything is around it and not stuck in any one position. Let me restart the camera to make sure we don't get skunked here. Dude, I cannot stress about listening to the band as much, uh, or, or as more than Joe. Like, I'm trying to teach you something, but listen to the band. And a hi-hat grab with the left hand.
so many things to talk about. Um, uh, number one, you know you're flying if you do in between each lift that, like that, and always touching your volume knob. You know you're screaming because you want all the juice. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care what amps you think he has. I think he's got like everything under the sun. Like that's, in fact, that's one of Joe's like the things people get upset with Joe about is because he's just like gear centric. But the dude plays his absolute face off. Believe me, he doesn't need the gear. Point I'm trying to make is, right now, dude wants more. Still doesn't have it, right? When when you're doing this and con- you want all it can take. That's a stone cold guitar player right there playing with electricity. Okay, once. Everything that it has. Going, bending and picking until the string's going to break, amp's going to blow. Once more, still can't get more. That is my kind of guitar player, right? Now, uh, I forgot what the second thing I was going to say was, besides the band. Oh, he's doing this little lick here. I don't know exactly what it is, but I think it's root, then maybe it's not flat seven. Maybe it's just right behind it on the major seven, and then trying to get right back up to it. You can do it flat seven. That's harder. I mean, you can mix and match. Um, other thing that you'll notice, you can tell we're leading the band towards the end of the thing because... Uh, we start repeating a lot. Our hands are starting to get tired. We're putting in, I mean, we're really working. We're breaking a full sweat here. Band's following you. And so you start doing a lot of, like saying the same thing over and over again, right? Then he goes to this this part like, and then just doing the same thing in different places. Uh, these are all just repeating things to let the band know that we can we can build up. We're going to go up there together because the end is near, right? Um, and it's such a natural thing to do when you start to get tired, which is just hold all the... Or whatever it is. We all have those things. But um, you're seeing Joe not in exploratory land right now. You're seeing Joe in like we're, we've, we're solidly there in a spot. We we've decided, you know, that we're we're at the peak, right? And then we're gonna find a way to bring it down together. And repeating those same licks over and over again, whether they're in different places, like different pick attack, but not taking the ear on a journey anymore, but just like but just like we're here and we're all locking in, that's when you know you're about at the top of the mountain. See? There you go. Yes. Woo. Okay, that who is awesome. This is so there's so much in here. This is gonna be such a long video. <laughs> okay. Um This part of the neck in G is one of the it's one of like the true gifts of a guitar player that, that we have, you know. Not all keys are created equally because of the open strings and just the size of the frets and the tension in the strings and where you are. But this this zone up here, right, in op- open G area, it's, you know, he's getting that sharp pick attack down near the bridge or with his fingers, and that. <laughs> Being able to do these open strings, again, major six, flat seven, and, but also this, right? But then with the, doing that easy top thing, you know, like, I haven't done that in a minute, that's hard. Um, but this zone, so 
such a great spot. I, I implore all of you uh, <laughs> to dig into that spot. Let me show you my favorite lick in that spot. This. Fifth. Fourth. This, my friends, is your flat five. Approach it from the back. From the front. Anything in there it is so much fun. Bring it down. Again, again, rocking through that flat six. Can't stress it enough. That is the key takeaway here. That, 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 that sorry. E, not E flat, all day. Love the back of singing. Is he right on the bridge? Again, that was your major six. Listen for it. E, telling you. They are great. Now, what in the hell do we have here? You got. Using the video. I'm thinking. Again, root, flat three, fifth, fourth. But like this. Something like that. Such dynamics, man. Way <laughs> out. Nobody does those runs like Joe. Uh, two, th couple few things. One, Daniel Perez Valencia. Thanks for being a lifetime member and recommending this. When did you even throw this out here? Do I even have a date on here? I guess not. Uh, but thanks for being a part of the community. Um, two, thanks, Steve. Thank you for calling me and calling me out. Um, let me just say this. Here are my key takeaways. One, I think Bonamassa gets a lot of shade in the guitar community. And I think it's, I don't know why. I think it's mostly because of um, his impossible to obtain gear collection, but uh, let me tell you something. Joe, Joe is like a guitar player's guitar player, like a, like a, a man's guitar player. Like he he plays so strong and with such fortitude, but also such touch and dynamics that like. There aren't that many of us that could even make all these dumbles and all these incredible instruments sing like that and have that much dynamic range and content. Like, can actually, like, it's, it's like you can't just put anybody behind a Ferrari. Do you know what I'm saying? Do you know what I'm saying here? Like, you can't buy that you can't buy you can't do all that through the gear i watch joe and i'm and i'm thinking to myself he wants more he wants more juice he wants more heat like the dude is ready to go um and man i'd love to see him live i've never seen him live um and uh and that's it uh key takeaways uh, um besides that one band tremendous go back and listen to this or anything else from live at the greek uh because the i'm gonna go and see what other songs they do um the band is perfect the arrangements the way the whoo, comes in they save the backups there's so many things they save for like seven minutes in eight minutes in 
Um, so many good parts. Everybody's listening. So many moments of silence from each one of them, besides the drums and bass, of course, um, where they're given like nobody lightning strikes at the same time. And like you got Kirk back there, like laying the perfect funk texture throughout everything. Like just so easy to sleep on that. But man, you don't have that. And it's all of a sudden you look down through the glass and the bottom's right there. You don't have this nice pillow to look at, right? To land on. There's so many little things that allow Joe to be Joe. And the other thing I love about Joe is that all of that's on purpose. Who he hires, where he tours, his whole way of doing business is something I've always wanted to talk to him about. Um, because I, I just think he does it about as good as you can do it. From the musicians he hires to how he treats them to how he plays to their strengths and, and I don't want to say avoids their weaknesses, but really just like lets them be who the hell they are, you know, but still within this really tight arranged framework. Um, the way he rents out the venues, the way he uh, is in control of the whole vertical integration of the thing, like all musicians, whether you like Joe or not, should pay attention to the man and what he's up to. That's it, my friends. Know that I love you. Know that uh, I sincerely appreciate you being a part of this community. Um, if you want to be like Daniel, uh, and you want to take my lessons and courses, you dig kind of learning theory and practically how to go through the fretboard, but you like it in organized fashion, <laughs> step by step, and not just and not just flamethrower approach like these relax, React lessons are videos. Hit the first link in the description. It's called GuitarGate. It's an entire learning community. It's my life's work. Uh, I'm incredibly proud of it, and I'd love to be your online teacher or at least one of them. And if you learn nothing else. I'm going to leave you with this. Just keep the damn thing in your hands. Try to get a little bit better each day and enjoy the process, right? Don't have it in the case. Leave it out on the couch. Keep picking it up, and you will continue to improve. That's it, my friends. See you soon. Love you. Cheers.